Well, good morning and welcome to CrossFit Online. It's great to be back, uh, to be able to share God's Word with you this morning, and I trust that you're all doing well, and uh, that this morning may be uh, an eye-opener, an encouragement, uh, and yeah, as we turn to the Lord's Word this morning, that it may truly reveal to us uh, something to be thankful for and joyful for. Uh, we've come out of a month of Thanksgiving, and perhaps uh, this this that we're going to look at this morning will just stir us to greater uh, levels of thankfulness as we go and explore God's Word. Uh, this morning, what I'm going to be sharing with you is we are going to start a series uh, for the next couple of weeks looking at the Holy Spirit and we are going to take a few looks at, at different angles and see the significance of who he is and what he means to us and why it is so important that we reflect and consider the Holy Spirit in in us and uh, what he is doing in us and so I hope that the next couple of weeks really move you to uh, be filled with absolute joy for what the Lord has done and is doing and uh, will do in and uh, for us through His uh, this, His Spirit. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, um, before I look at the passage this morning, I'm going to open in a word of prayer. And uh, then we'll turn to uh, the passage that we are going to reflect on. So let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can turn to you your word as it is recorded, but as it also testifies and uh, makes clear for us who your son is uh, and also the significance of your spirit that you have given us, that uh, we are not alone in this world, in all of its uh, challenges and obscurities, that we get to do this and face this life in the certainty of who you are. Uh, by your spirit that is in us and so lord i pray that this morning may be an encouragement uh, may it stir us to new levels of joy in knowing who you are uh, in your spirit and because of your son jesus christ and we pray this in jesus name amen well the passage that i'm going to look at this morning uh, i'm not going to unpack the topic all that widely because we're going to look at it over the next couple of weeks but i want to lay a bit of groundwork and foundation for us as we get into the series so this may come as uh, not necessarily new information maybe it's something that you've already looked at or heard before but i hope that it will stir you and just get you to think again a little bit more uh, about who the holy spirit is uh, and who we are and how we are created uh, in the image of god uh, and part of why we are doing this series is because I think we don't give enough attention to the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. We so quickly uh, turn to Jesus or turn to God the Father, but we so often uh, shy away from the Holy Spirit and who He is and what He, uh, what he means to us. Uh, and it, it's really fantastic if you begin to look at who He is. Uh, and it is a joy uh, to explore this. So I hope it is a joy for you as much as it is for me. And the passage that we're going to look at this morning is Ezekiel 36. Uh, and I'm going to just start by reading uh, just a few verses there in Ezekiel 36, 24, picking up there. It says, For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries, and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. And so we're just going to look at those few verses there, particularly uh, verses 26 and 27. Uh, if you heard, it's, it's an incredible picture that's painted when it speaks about the Spirit. There's two spirits, or actually there's three spirits if you want to look at it in that way. The first spirit is our own spirit, but the old spirit uh, that the passage highlights. A spirit that is corrupted. 
The second one that is spoken about is a new spirit that is given. And the third spirit is the Holy Spirit, God's spirit uh, that is then given. And obviously there is some context to this passage in Ezekiel. Yes, there is a connection to Israel, but there is also a connection to us today. Uh, the passage carries on and it builds all the way into chapter 37. And just to pick up something there, it says in 37 verse 24, My servant David will be king over them, and they will all have one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. And so just to highlight that, this this descendant of David, uh, this servant of David, this king, he also is referred to as this prince. He is the one that will come and will rule over. And as we look at Ezekiel, it's pointing ahead for us to Jesus. And so in Ezekiel, there's this call saying, I will give you a new spirit and I will put my spirit in you. And on top of that, this is in light of what will take place when this king, this servant, this prince will come and rule uh, over God's people. So for us today, we see that there is a connection for us, uh, not to jump there too quickly, but to help us to understand this passage has got significance for us too. It's not simply Israel that gets a new spirit, but it is us as well. Uh, all those that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will receive a new spirit, and that is painted for us in the picture of being reborn, uh, a new birth, as well as uh, we are uh, receiving the Holy Spirit, as we see in the account that took place after Christ's ascension and the moment of Pentecost, where the Spirit was then given. And so that unfolds uh, into uh, time from that point on for all that believe in Jesus Christ. So all that believe in Jesus Christ receive a new spirit of their own, as well as the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. But why is this necessary? Well, just to add a little bit more uh, depth to what is taking place, if you flip back uh, just to what's really incredible, back to Genesis uh, verse 1, uh, you see the first thing that you can highlight there is he says in verse 27 of verse 1, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then if you had to flip uh, to where God actually uh, forms Adam, <clears throat> chapter 2, Then the Lord God, uh, verse 7, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And so what we capture in that Genesis account is that God creates, first of all, he creates man in his own image, and in the image of who he is, how he is, in some ways, how he designs us, is an imprint of who he is. And so if you think of God, he has the he, part of who he is, the person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is part of uh, is part of who He is. And as He has created us, He has given us also a spirit, which makes it really there's a kind of complicated process if you want to start to explore that uh, a, a little bit more deeply. But we have an imprint of God. We have a spirit as well as our heavenly Father is also Father, Son, and Spirit. And so Andrew Murray does a really great job at explaining this in some ways as he looks at the Holy Spirit and as he highlights the fact that we are created in the image of God. And as we are created in the image of God, we have an innermost being. That innermost being of ours is our spirit. And our spirit uh, is in our very core. It's, it, it, it's in our very innermost being, as the expression tells us. And so God, at his very core, has the Holy Spirit, which is his innermost being. If that is the, if you can paint that picture of how we are made in his image. And so what Andrew Murray helps us to see in, in his book, as he looks at the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of Christ, he shows us how God then, in light of Ezekiel 36, actually when he gives us a new spirit, he also puts his spirit 
in us. And so his innermost being is placed into our innermost being, which is a really beautiful and intimate and incredible picture that then gets painted for us. <clears throat> but the question is, maybe you're wondering, well, why is it that God wants to give us a new spirit? Of all things, why a spirit? Is it not a body? Is it not flesh? Is it not a mind? Is it not a heart? Well, as we saw in Ezekiel, there's a heart issue, but the spirit is part of who we are. Our spirit and our hearts and our minds and our flesh is all part of who we are. And we see later on in Genesis that the fall corrupts that all. And so as you track through the Old Testament, you see the issue unfolding with Israel, particularly as it tracks with Israel and God's people. And there is this issue that all of humanity in all of who they are is corrupted. There is brokenness. There is issues of sin. Uh, and so what is incredible is that in Ezekiel, he says, well, enough. <laughs> there is now a line that is drawn. And he says, now has come the time that I'm going to give you a new spirit. And not only just a new spirit, you're going to get a new spirit. Plus, you're going to have my spirit in you. And that's really beautiful. So going on into the New Testament, as we experience and, and recognize and receive Jesus Christ, we are then entering into receiving the Holy Spirit. And as we do so, our spirits are firstly renewed as we receive Jesus Christ, as we are reborn. And then on top of that, we receive his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit ministers to our spirit and his spirit uh, helps us, shapes us, transforms us, as we're going to see in a little bit. His spirit then begins to transform us from our innermost being. So what God has done through Jesus Christ, he has set in motion the, <clears throat> the rescue uh, and the sanctification and the salvation from our brokenness in our flesh. But he has also set in motion the restoration, the renewing of even our innermost being. God is concerned, obviously, with all of who we are, but he wants to transform us from within. And what's so incredible, if you think about it, it, you may change your actions on the outside. But if what's happening on the inside is still wicked and corrupted, it is going to end up coming out. So what good is it to correct or restore or make new the outside if the inside is still rotten? We want to be transformed from within. And this is what's really beautiful as we look at Ezekiel, as, as we are given this promise that this is what God is going to do. He is going to do it through his king. He's going to do it through his servant, through his prince. And he is going to come. He's going to rule. And when he rules, he's going to send his spirit. And his spirit is going to dwell in us, which is beautiful. And it is intimate that his innermost being is ministering, is there, is present in our innermost being. Wow. That, I don't know if that excites you, but that excites me. That's really amazing to think that here I am sitting today. <clears throat> if I call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and proclaim and confess and obey him, we are told that he gives us his spirit and his, and he also gives us a new spirit. And these two become so intertwined that our lives are transformed from the inside out. This is amazing. So let's consider a few things in the New Testament then. Just to jump ahead, uh, to pick up in 2 Corinthians. Listen to this, what it says in 2 Corinthians 3. Uh, just picking up on a few aspects here, 3 verse 12. It says, therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away but their minds were but their minds were made dull for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read it has not been removed before uh, because only in Christ is it taken away now listen to these words even to this day when Moses is read a veil covers their hearts but whenever anyone turns to the lord the veil is taken away now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being trans transformed into His image with every increasing glory, 
which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So as it highlights, God created us originally in His image. And as He created us in His image, it was good, but it became corrupted. And so through Jesus Christ, He unveils in us and for us the joy and the wonder of His glory through His Spirit. That His Spirit in us then begins to transform us into the correct, the right, the good, the perfect image of the Father. And so we begin this process of being sanctified, transformed, renewed, restored in His Spirit that is at work in us. This is incredible news. If that's not enough, I mean there's so many passages in the New Testament that you can go and explore at how the Spirit The Holy Spirit is at work in us. But listen to this. Quickly jump uh, jump to Romans 8. I mean, Romans 8 or Romans is packed with, with points and references to the Holy Spirit. But listen to Romans 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. Who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So maybe at this point, what's a helpful thing to do is to pause and ask the question, well, what does it mean then at a foundational level, at a very core level, what does it mean to then have the Holy Spirit in me? Well, we've established that in Christ, we receive a new spirit that as we confess and believe and recognize Jesus Christ and and see what he has done, he gives us a new spirit. But in order for that new spirit to be to stay in line and, and, and be part of the image that God has created us in, he gives us his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in us then looks like a person that is being transformed. I mean, this sounds super simple in some ways that if you consider it, if you ask yourself the question, well, what does it look like for a person that is filled with the spirit or someone that has Has the Spirit at work in them? Well, we want to look for often signs. We want to look for this uh, mystic kind of uh, aspect of the Holy Spirit. And it's not to say that that doesn't happen, but for a foundational purpose, for us to really get to the root of what it means to have the Holy Spirit residing in us is a life that is transformed from desiring the flesh to desiring to the the outworking of the Spirit in us. So when you look at your life, maybe you can do a little bit of a test for yourself and ask yourself the question. For a moment, pause and say there's a scenario in your life that happened in the past week. It can be anything, really. Uh, It could be something that happened when you were on the road or when you were at school or when you were at work or wherever you are. Maybe someone upset you. And ask yourself the question, When I was upset or shocked or whatever the case may be, how did I respond in that moment? Did I give in to my fleshly desire to be or to respond in a way that I feel I deserve? Or did I notice that my reaction or response was slightly less than what it would have been when I wasn't a Christian? I know this sounds like a very practical way of looking at it but in actual fact it is so consider how would you have responded in the situation that you have in your mind had you had it been 10 years or 20 years ago or whenever you uh, before you became a christian would you have responded differently and i i played the game with myself uh, and I, i had a chat with zahn about it and it was so fascinating because as i thought about it I said to her, man, in this situation, if it was 15 years ago or however long ago, I said, I wouldn't have responded in this way. Suddenly, 
for that person or that situation, I'm starting to notice that there are there is more grace, there's more patience, there's more compassion, there's a little bit more understanding. I'm a little bit slower to just get angry. And it's not to say that that's always the case, but there seems to be a slighter, there seems to be a greater pull. There's this greater gravitational pull toward wanting to do something that is considerate of the other person or the circumstance to be aware of not just myself and what my flesh feels it deserves. And so as I was reflecting on it, I began to say to, well, to reflect and be able to communicate it and say it. You know what? I'm able to begin to see more clearly God at work in me. And how is God at work in me? Well, he's at work in me in his spirit. His spirit is the one who is transforming me. The spirit is the one who is shaping me to look more like his son, Jesus Christ. I mean, this seems almost so simple that it's it's too simple. But it's not something that I myself can now go and try and uh, achieve in my own strength. But the Holy Spirit working in me requires, and we'll look at this in a little bit more detail in in the weeks coming. But the transformation that takes place requires one side of me surrendering and being willing to have His Spirit work in me. And to reveal His Son in me and the Father in me. And the other side of it is purely dependent on Him transforming me then there's this level of which the work that i put in is almost outweighed by what the spirit is doing in and through me so this is remarkable because what it does is it as roman says it i am free and two uh, two corinthians highlights there's this freedom where the spirit is at work I'm no longer governed and determined and shaped by my flesh. Because in Jesus Christ and in his spirit at work in me, I am transformed. I'm transformed from within. And as he ministers, as he works, as he deals with my new spirit, the two together are able to transform me from within, change my heart, turn a heart of stone into a heart of flesh, minister to my mind, and eventually it will overflow in my own words and actions and transform me. And this is incredible. So I encourage you, as you listen to this, to think about it. That's the only way that this is going to apply, is for you to really consider who is the Holy Spirit? Who is He to you? Do you see His hand at work in your life? And the, one of the ways, and I'm not saying this is the only way to see the Holy Spirit at work, but one of the ways to see His work in your life is to remember, recall, as Ludwig kind of highlighted through the Thanksgiving month, to, to go back and look at your life and see how it has been transformed over the years in in what we may have at that point called in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, but ultimately in the work that the Holy Spirit is doing in and through you as he reveals Christ in you so that you may grow into the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So God is at work in us through his spirit. This this is... this. This blew my mind as I got to wrestle and contemplate it further and deeper this week. And it left me feeling overjoyed. And I hope it leaves you feeling overjoyed as we get to wrestle deeply uh, with this tension that is in us. Because there is, as, as both... Uh, Romans and 2 Corinthians has highlighted, there is this tension between the flesh and the spirit. 
And we are shifting from away from the flesh and being transformed in the spirit. But it is tangible. I encourage you to go and reflect. Because in reflecting, you are going to experience the tangibility of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his spirit. It is mind-blowing how incredible it is when you begin to re recall and remember how you have been transformed. I mean, I've heard one or two fantastic stories over the last while of people testifying of how they have changed. And when I hear that, I begin to be filled with joy because it is the spirit at work in them. This is amazing. So how do you know? Look and see the fruits that are flowing from knowing Jesus Christ. Look and see how you are reflecting something that is different to what you once were. Look and rejoice in our Lord and God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is transforming us in his spirit. Jesus Christ, before he, uh, before he ascended, said he was going to give us a helper. And as we go into this series, I really hope that you will begin to appreciate and accept the help of the helper, which is the Holy Spirit in us. If you believe today that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, don't harden your heart. Don't, re don't make it complicated or resist the work of the Holy Spirit in you. In some ways, open yourself up to the Spirit in you to transform you from within. And as that takes place, you will find there is freedom. There is joy. And it is amazing. It is a wonderful thing to know that God is so tangible in us through his spirit. So perhaps you've been asking, maybe you're at that point where you're asking, uh, where is God? Maybe you feel like you're uncertain if he is at work. The best place to start looking and it, is to consider what's happening in your heart, in your innermost being. Are you being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ? I really hope that this encourages you today to go and explore who the Holy Spirit is and begin to consider it. As I say, we haven't gotten into the details or the depths of it all. But this is just simply an introduction to get us excited to know that what we are about to jump into in this series has the power to transform our lives because it is all about the Holy Spirit, who is the helper, the one that has been given to us to reveal the Father and the Son to us, in us. How amazing is this? Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we... Thank you that you have given us your spirit and it is by your spirit in us that we can call upon you and call to you, Abba Father. Thank you that you are transforming us through the mighty power of your spirit at work in us. And as we seek you, we can only truly do so through your spirit in us, that it is your spirit in us that reveals to us. And reveals in us more and more of who you are as you transform us into your image. So thank you, Lord, that you are at work in your people. And you have set it in motion through your spirit. And Lord, I pray that we may not harden our hearts or close ourselves off to the work of your spirit in our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I pray that you may be blessed by this new, perhaps, information or a reminder of this information. But that you may be blessed by the knowledge that the Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is at work in you today. 
Have a wonderful day. See you all next week. Cheers. Bye.